Hey, welcome to Learning Tech 101. My name is Renik, and today we're going to have a quick chat about virtualization. So virtualization, it allows one server to host many different virtual machines or to create network devices on demand. Virtual devices operate similarly to your physical counterparts. Now, there are a lot of uses of virtualization, a lot of benefits to it as well. So you're starting to see with the advances of virtualization, the cloud technology start to skyrocket. So some of the things that uh, you can benefit from with virtualization are going to be deploy new virtual devices quickly, easier to move virtual devices within a data center or between data centers, and to increase or decrease resources allocated based on utilization rising and falling. So with uh, virtualization, you're going to be able to set up devices so much more faster instead of having to purchase that server, wait for it to come in, then start to physically put it in place, then start to do the configuration when with the virtualization, once you set up that virtual machine on that server that it's on, now you just got to start it up and then can start configuring it however you choose. The other thing is it's easy to move because all it is is just taking files and moving them from one system to another system and then importing them into that other system. So that's going to be a whole lot easier than if it was a actual physical server that's taking it out, mailing it to wherever it needs to go. And then once it gets there, actually putting it in place. And then the last part about being able to decrease and increase resources. So this is something that's really big because if you buy a server and you get to the point where you need more hard drive space or you need more RAM, uh, then you're going to have to completely bring that server down, take it out, open it up, install the new hardware, put it back in and everything where with virtualization, all it is is shutting down that VM, changing a couple settings and then firing it back up. And now you have new uh, resources to be able to incorporate into that system. Now, for virtualization, to be able to use VMs, you're going to have to use what's called hypervisors. So hypervisors are what's used to create the virtual hardware for the devices. Hypervisors can host multiple virtual machines, each running its own guest operating system and applications. So hypervisors are going to be what's going to be allowed to or what is actually managing and creating your virtual machines on these different systems. So there are two types of hypervisors. You have a type one and then a type two. So your type one is also referred to as a bare metal hypervisor. Now, bare metal systems are going to be ones that do not have an operating system already installed. So what it is, is your type one hypervisor software is installed directly on the hardware. So basically, it technically will become the operating system of that hardware. So it's going to have direct control and access to the hardware of that system. So they're going to be able to access details and manage your virtual machine is done through a remote system. So VMware ESXi is an example of a type one hypervisor. So you install it on the server that you wanted to have it on, but to actually be able to manage it and access it, you have to do that from another system. So you have to remote into it and then be able to do it. Microsoft Hyper-V is another example of a type one hypervisor. Now, some have a little confusion when it comes to Microsoft Hyper-V because they're like, well, it's installed. There's a operating system already there on the server. Well, the thing is, once you actually turn on the feature or you install that feature for Microsoft Hyper-V, what ends up happening is Microsoft's system has a way of allowing it direct access to the hardware like a traditional type one would. And then what it does is end up creating, making the actual host operating system that's already there into a semi virtual machine of that hypervisor. So that's how it kind of gets around the way of being considered a type two and actually being considered a type one, because once you actually do turn it on, it's going to give it direct access to the hardware that type twos don't have, which we'll talk about in a second. So with our type twos, these are going to be sometimes referred to as hosted hypervisors. They're installed as an application on your personal computer and laptops. Virtual machines share the hardware resources with the hosted system. So the thing with your type twos, you're normally going to only see these used on laptops and desktops. Yes, you can install a type two on a server, but it's not something you actually see normally happen. Normally, like I said, you're going to see these more used on your, your PCs and that, everything. So with that, because there's a host operating system there and all the other applications that are installed on that system, 
it means that it has to share the hardware resources of that with everything else. So now the hard drive space, the RAM, the processing, the network adapter, all of that is shared with everything else that's installed on that system as well. Unlike with our Type 2s, everything is already, uh, it has that direct hardware access and there's nothing else there that it has to compete with for that. So you're going to be able to, in a Type 1, make more robust hypervisors or virtual machines, I'm sorry, uh, in type ones than you would in a type two, because in the type two, you're still going to be limited on having to make sure that you're, there's enough for everything else to not impact the rest of the stuff that is on that system. So your examples of type twos, you're, you definitely your more common ones are your VMware workstation or your virtual box. So you're able to install these on any you know regular system and then within them be able to create virtual machines that are going to allow you to run other operating systems. Hopefully you found this helpful and I thank you for watching. <music>